Hey everybody, so we're here at a website for another statistics textbook that I've used before called The Basic Practice of Statistics, and there are a bunch of really awesome web applets that are developed here that are free to use for everybody, so we're going to use these um, throughout the semester and I'm going to make some videos about it to explain some concepts that are hard to draw out in class. So the first of these that we're going to talk about is called the mean and the median. And as we'll learn this week in class, the two measures, uh, when we're dealing with numerical variables, a lot of times we want to summarize them and it can provide information about the variable and the values of the variable without writing down every single value. So one measure of this is the center, or the measure of central tendency of your variable. And the way we measure that is by using the mean and the median. And pretty much what these give you is some sense of where the center of all of your values are. So if I were to take the mean, which is the average of all of the ages in the class, it would give me a value of the age that was somewhere in the middle. To calculate the mean, I would add up all of the ages and then divide them by the number of ages. In opposition, the median is also a representation of the center of your population, but in the case of the median, I take all of my numerical values, say the age of the people in the class, and I order them in terms of smallest to largest. Then, if I have an odd number of members of my population, I pick the middle value because there'll be an even number on both sides of that value. If I have an even number of members of my population, I average the two middle values. So what the purpose of this video is and this applet is to show you why it is that sometimes the mean is useful and why it is that sometimes the median is useful. So down here what we're going to do is we're going to start adding members to our population by clicking. So I can click on a met down here and what this says is that I have one member of my population right there and the yellow arrow means that my mean and my median are the same because the middle value and the average value when I only have one number is the same. Now if I keep adding values over here, my mean and median stay the same. Now let's look at what happens if I add another point over here. Now my red line, my red arrow denotes the median and my green arrow denotes the mean. So the mean is moved to the right because it's trying to create an average of all of these points and this point out here. But if we were to put all of these numbers in order, we would find that the middle number is going to be the fourth value, or in between the third and fourth value right there, which is still this value. So the median remains over there. And it's going to stay over there even as I start adding some another point over here. Now because I've picked a point further away, my mean has me moved even further to the right, but my median still stays where most of the points are. So let's see what happens as I start to add more points. My mean continues to move to the right, but my median's not going to move to the right until right there, until I get enough points over here that it no longer exists right there. So that's one interesting thing about the median that you just saw, is that it can jump a big distance, whereas the mean in general will not jump a big distance. The second important difference between a mean and a median happens if we have most of our distribution in one place, So I'm going to say that most of my points are over here. And what I'm constructing here is what's called a dot plot that we'll learn about later. And then I'm going to take these other values and I'm going to throw them away. So that's what it does if you put them over in this trash can. Now look at what happens with my mean and my median. So let's say that all of my points are over here. Well, sometimes we have what are called an outlier, which is an anomalous observation or something that is a mistake. So I may get a couple points over here. Now look at what happens to my mean. My mean, even though there's only a couple points over here, has jumped all the way away from all of the points over here that might be the true values that I'm interested in. But my median stays in the center. So in this sense, the median is called a robust estimator of the center because even if I throw a few extraneous values out here, it's not going to jump around to a place like the mean has, which may no longer describe the central tendency